Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I talked about my open source project and I've been thinking it's time to give you an update. So before implementing music suggestion feature, tracks filter, analytics and literally anything I need to get user Spotify library first and I will explain what I did for that and how you can implement that efficiently. First off, obviously there is no way to fetch your entire library in a single request, so we need to deal with data offsets. Here is what Spotify API can provide us. For each page of data there would be an array of tracks, and track object contains a bunch of different properties such as track identifier, name, album with album cover and artist. Unfortunately, the artist object is actually an artist object preview, meaning it doesn't have all the necessary fields. But for certain features of my app, I need to know what genres an artist associated themselves with. Also, it would be great to have an artist cover image to show it on the front end. My guess is Spotify included only mutable data here. Maybe it's even cached somewhere for faster access. Because if you think about it, an artist can start playing music in a different genre or they can change their artwork in a profile once a day. But they don't change their name that often, right? And those genres and images in the Spotify system might be stored in a completely different tables. And they just don't want to make another SQL join. Because including everything in a single result set would only increase query execution time. And the more SQL joins you have, the more response time will be. That's why for each track I need to make a separate request to get full artist information. And luckily I can provide up to 50 artist IDs at the time. Whether you're designing application APIs, utilizing them or creating the entire system from scratch, you need more than just coding skills. The role of software engineers demand proficiency in problem solving, critical thinking, testing, debugging and most importantly, it requires dedication to continuous learning. And sometimes you can be overwhelmed by the amount of information out there. From my experience, I know it's crucial to have your own learning roadmap and it's even better to have a mentor who can guide you and share feedback. Which is why I'm so excited to share with you guys today's sponsor, Springboard. Springboard is an online learning and career platform that provides a curriculum tailored by experts. We will allow you to learn all the core skills that a software engineer needs. The industry-leading software engineering curriculum includes getting familiar with industry's most commonly used languages and technologies, such as React.js, Python, Node.js, SQL and more. And of course, you will learn about data structures and algorithms, which are crucial for succeeding in interviews. You will gain hands-on experience with each stage of development process, from designing your web page or application to final review and putting it into production. You will be 100% online with self-paced learning, allowing you to learn on your schedule and at your own pace. So if you're looking to take control of your career and not only a software engineering path, but also machine learning, data science, cybersecurity or UX design ones, Springboard is a great ways to gain and elevate your skills. One of the best things about it, if you meet all the requirements, Springboard offers a job guarantee at the end of the program. It's not just a bootcamp, Springboard gives you total access to a complete educational platform along with personalized attention from your career coach who supports you every step all the way. And only for you guys, down in the description below you will find a very special link with my promo code that will give you an amazing discount of one thousand dollars and now let's get back to spotify data fetching all right guys so as they say shut up and show me the code 
So I defined the fame client that would first of all get the user's profile and then get user's saved tracks. And when I have all the tracks, I can start calling get artists from the track object. And of course, I created a set of objects to map all this. By the way, I took advantage of records over regular classes and annotated with Lombok. I think records perfectly fit for request object mapping. Okay, one important thing I want to highlight here is that if I do request by request, getting all 3500 tracks from my library takes about 50 seconds, which is ridiculously long. But the good news, we can easily improve that by switching from Java sequential streams to the parallel ones. And this can be applied to all programming languages that support multi-threaded execution. So by default, parallel streams use a common thread pool that has a size of number of processor physical cores on the machine minus one. As you can see, my Mac has eight cores, so Java would use seven of those for the common thread pool. And if we do the math, 50 seconds divided by seven cores is around seven seconds. Let's run it again and try to prove the theory. And the moment of truth. Yeah, it took exactly 7 seconds. So it looks like we saved 43 seconds just by adding the parallel word in there. Now I have all the necessary data and I can start exploring my library. I can understand, let's say, in what year I added the most music ever. Okay, it seems that in 2018 my release radar was on fire. Also, I can get the number of tracks per artist. Yep, the top 5 still looks pretty relevant. And then I can filter the same result by year. Take for instance 2021. Or maybe even this year. Nice, that's definitely a start. So the bottom line is multi-threaded processing is beautiful. But yeah, there is always some buts. Such processing has areas where we need to be more cautious. For instance, item ordering. I don't care about that in this case. I just get all the tracks, put them in a collection, and that's it. Another point can be data duplication, and I actually care about that, like, a lot. And I will definitely show the ways how to deal with it in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that. And also, if you enjoyed the video, I really hope you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments how you optimize something in a project.